the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's why I'm only co- coaching a few now too. Is we gotta we, we gotta be in this together, and you gotta trust me, and I get I gotta be there for you. And if you trust me, then every decision that I make for you, you've got to trust. Whether it's hey, don't take this fight. I mean, with the fight, the last fight, I was like, no, you're not taking the fight. And he's like, come what, on, coach. What, what fight is that? This is the Tony fight when he first got offered for the first time. And I was like, no, we we're at sparring session. And he's like, why not? And I'm like, because you said you'd never take a short notice fight. I'm like, no. Yeah, and then it was like, like 11 days, right? Yeah, Wasn't it something yeah. crazy and like he, that? But we've been training hard. Like all, then he hit me with all these points. And he's like, dude, with the coronavirus going on, who cares? He's like, let me get in there. I need to fight someone right now. I need to release all this. And his little basic points... I looked at him. I said, "All right, is it good? Are you going to do it again? Are you going to stick to your goal on the next one? Because I, I might let you off on this one." And he said, "I will never take a short notice fight." That's why the second time it was offered, he was even more pissed about it. And I was just like, "He's like the other one was seven days out. Like I got nothing to lose. You know, I'll go out on my shield." So this was the let's let's be clear for everybody. Yep. The, the first time was the the uh, Lemoore, California one, the yep. Tai Chi Palace, April eighteenth. Yep, April eighteenth, and yep. that was how many days out? So I got the call. I, I think, think it was 10 or something like that. No, I think it was, uh, it was like 15 days before that fight. I got the call one night. The next day I went, you know, I called him. He said no that night. Went to sparring the next day. And then that's when I talked, you know, not talked him into it, but I, I did like seven hard rounds. I uh, felt great. You know, I had been sparring so much. And so he was like, um, I was like, let's do it. You know, I talked him into it. And then so we, we go hard. And then I think it was, when did they cancel? I think it was... Ten days before the fight, they canceled it, mm-hmm. and that's when you know it went out the window. And then um, they called me. So did me. you? Did so you then fall I, right out of camp, or did so you? So yeah, keep so I, I was down to one sixty eight. They called me at like three p.m. and that night I went to sleep at like one eighty two. Like, <laughs> I went hard. I went. <laughs> I you know just terrible choices. I was like, what'd you eat? What'd you eat? I went, go to? I went straight to a, it's called McGill's World of Ice Cream. I got <laughs> you know double scoop with the waffle cone, and then we ate. Uh, Pizza Hut for breakfast the next morning. Oof. We had pancakes. For, in my, I had my cousin Basquito there with me. He was helping me, uh, you know, help with, with my cooking and uh, helping me around the house uh, during that that those hard you know twenty days. And yeah, we went hard. We <laughs> went, we went so like hard. And then three days later, they called me and they're like, you know, it's May 9th. And I was like, fuck that. I was like, I don't take short short notice fights. It's like this last one was, you know, ten days. I get the benefit of the doubt of it being a late late notice fight. And now they want me to do May 9th. You know that that goes out the window. That you know me. That's not now. It's not really a late replacement fight. It is, but it is for me, and it is in general. But you know the the general public would think you know this is he got a full camp and this is a real fight, blah blah blah. So I was like, no, like I'm not doing it. So um, you, well, let me get this straight. So you're not doing it because you fell out of camp and started eating again? Because because so the. The the twenty day notice was like something very special, like that was something that I definitely could have performed and I would have performed and I think this the is fight, the April eighteenth. This fight. is the April eighteenth. I think I would have performed uh, and mm-hmm. I think I would have won. I wouldn't have been as confident. I was I was terrified when they called me that night. I was terrified. I couldn't sleep. The next day I woke up terrified because um, I knew I knew that this is not what I do. This is not how I do it. This is a, but because but I, you weren't fully prepared. Because there's no way to fully prepare in that amount of time. Right. My mind. My right. mind. What I go in there and do, I have to get my mind in a very, very special place. How much of it is that, and how much of it is physical? You know, like I don't know. I don't ask. My, fit, I don't. I don't have that physically? question. I don't answer that. I can't answer that question for you. But here's the question: I don't process that. But that's I mean, not something I ever process. This. What I'm saying in this way, though, is what? How physically prepared were you? Were you in I, training? Yeah. So I was just. Um, I was my main. I was the main training partner for Neil Magny, oh, Austin okay. Hubbard when they fought in Vegas. Oh, um, okay. I was I was in shape. I was in shape. Um, so the second fight. Let me jump in here. The second fight I thought was a way better, way better a uh, place to be from a conditioning standpoint because he was already in shape prior to the first one. We just went two weeks so hard, like we were trying to get get his body in in shape quick, and that's a, that's a hard thing to do. Then he went and gained twelve pounds, which in, it, we were four weeks out of that point. Which is perfect because the fourth week out, I always pull back on and let their body recover because your third and your second week are our peak weeks. Those are the weeks that we need to really hit 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 prime and, and really push hard. And it was perfect fit. I'm like, dude, we take this time off. You going up and eating now? You're you, you're ready to go again. You you got that little that little uh, uh, 
fire back in your body because you're able to eat whatever you want. And I thought it was perfect timing from how I train my athletes from a conditioning standpoint. And I actually had to talk him into that one. I was like, this is even better. Like, this is perfect for you for a five round. So for your perspective, it's like he had a chance to recover. Eat all that food, take a little break, yep. and that's good because your body gets to charge back yep. up again and then grind back down. Because six and five on, on week six and week five are hard weeks. They're like a, a start to those, those uh, last two weeks of peaking. Because our, our fight week, we slow down a little bit, and we just turn the engine on, turn it off. So we go f uh, six and five on, on the weeks are really hard. Then we pull back on week four. We'll take like three days that are really light and then push it a little bit. And then week three and week two are the ones that I'm trying to get him to peak, get hit five rounds. We're not doing six rounds. We're not doing seven. We're making sure that we can go five minutes hard for every round, be sharp, not get lazy. And I thought it fit perfect to. So when you're saying week two, you mean two weeks out? Two weeks out, yep. Yeah. Right before we leave for the fight. What do you prefer? Like, if you had a blueprint, like they they came to you, Trevor. How much time do you want before a fight? Like, we'll schedule it around your time. If you're in decent shape, eight weeks. Eight if weeks. you're out of shape, twelve weeks. Mm. Twelve weeks, because you take three or four. If you don't lift weights for a little bit, and then you come back and lift weights, and you ain't lift for six months or three months, you're gonna get real sore. Yeah. So you've got to have that break-in process where your body, because your body's going to be shutting down, and you start to, ugh. So you have to get through that process of just the pre-training, and then you start to hit it hard. Because you can't just go in hitting it hard if you're 12 mm. weeks out. You just can't. Mm. It breaks you down. Yeah, you're going to get hurt. Yeah, so why did you feel that that was not a good fight, the May 9th fight? So like I had no idea I can, my body would respond as well as it didn't. I didn't think I could be ready a hundred to 100%. Uh, without, I've always done 12 weeks. That's my. That's all I've known. That's so all I've ever So you felt known. like the first decision was just like a split decision. Is the middle of COVID nineteen? Fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway. And then when they came to you the second time, you're like, no, 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 no. I, I want a real. Camp. Yeah. So why can't we just push it to May twenty sixth? Right. You know, give me three extra weeks. Then I get my whole. Then I get my whole eight right. to ten weeks. Right. And that's all I asked for. Um, so that was my mindset when they called me because I knew they were gonna call me the day before. I was like, watch, they're gonna fucking call me, and they're gonna want me to fight May 9th or something like that. And I, and I knew it. And then my manager called me. He's like. May 9th, let's go. I was like, fuck that. I was like, no. <laughs> he was so mad. No, I was like, fuck that. I was like, I ain't no fucking puppet. I'm not going to dance when they want me to dance. I was like, I said I don't take late replacement fights. This is now a late replacement. You know, this is different circumstances. These aren't the circumstances. Everyone And even he was like flabbergasted. He's like, what are you talking about? It's the same thing. I'm like, no, it's not the same thing. Like, to me, it's not. You know, like, because, I don't know. I just, confidence is everything. I know I can perform, you know. I but you wanted everything to be done right. It was the biggest fight of my life. Right, you of know? course. And but ultimately, and then and then when I thought about it, I was like, it's only it's if it's anybody's fault, it's my fault, you know? Because I knew this, you know, I, I knew I was going to fight again. And if I'm not, and if I wasn't, I was training hard, but I wasn't training with the mindset, you know, that I need to. I have an old school wrestling mentality, you know. You you have to see the prize, you know. Every single morning you wake up. You know, the guy, the guy that you're going to fight. You know, that wasn't there. That wasn't there when I woke up in the morning. So I didn't feel like I was preparing in the proper way so for something at, the, at that was at this level. So you don't just need 10 weeks for your body. You want it for your mind as well. That's the most, yeah, I mean, that's the most important part to me. I've been training since I was four. My body is, my body is a machine. Um, you know, I do, I, I didn't know I can get ready in that amount of time, that well, that's what it comes down to. I had no idea uh, because I've never tried it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was in better. I had done better between fights um, since since I fought Cowboy than I had ever done between fights. In in the in the in the fact that I was staying in shape, running. Um, you know, I had a treadmill at my house. I was still sparring. I never. You know, I took like two months off sparring, three months off sparring, but then I was sparring for three four months before I got that call. You know, and rage is hard to settle mm. down when someone hits rage like someone says something about your mama I'm always like they don't even know your mama like <laughs> seriously stop that shit like stop that's, that's, well there they, was a great moment after the second round after you got hit with that uppercut where you, you, you came back to the corner and you told them take something off your punches take about 10% off just hit him with clean shots yep. so you're try, trying to murder him with every shot and then you made that adjustment yeah. and that that's that was really interesting because a lot of times coaches will tell stuff to fighters and the fighters probably know somewhere in their head but it's fucking with them that they're starting to get tired it's fucking with them that they got hit and then yeah. they lose some composure yeah. they get emotional and they go out there and they wind up making mistakes you immediately adjusted and you went out there and you would see like by the end of that second round when Tony hit you with that shot people were like well maybe this is a shift in the yeah. the direction of the fight nope 
the the shift was the opposite way. You came out in the third round more technical, and you came out and did exactly what Trevor said. Yeah, so we worked long and hard on on that. Um, I trust him with you know with everything, as he said. You know, we wouldn't be he wouldn't be my coach if I didn't trust him with my life and with with what everything I go in there to do. Fuck. So when he said that to you, when Response. he said take ten percent yeah, off, so I, I'm trying. The crazy thing is, is you only see ten percent of the interaction between us right. in between rounds. Um, I'm right now. I'm actually with you, talking to the UFC, trying to get that whole, that whole thing. But um, yeah, it was. Um, you're you know, try, I got, you're I got hit to the UFC trying to get what the old recording. He's trying to get, trying to get his his audio from his oh. mic. Oh, because um, you want to hear it and watch yeah, it. Yeah, because I don't remember it. You know, right? It's of so course. fast and just like uh, when they come to me in the fifth round and I was laughing. Mm-hmm. I had just asked the reason I was laughing is because I had just asked him. I said, "Was that the end of the second or third round?" <laughs> and they're like, "This is a fifth round." I was like, "No fucking way! I'm in that good of shape." I was like, "No way!" And that's what that's when they cut in, you know. So you don't see there's so much you don't see uh, in that interaction but between me and him. And it's so important for fighters to see that adjustment and how his endurance leveled off because it was like you you were having these wild exchanges yeah. and you were pu- you were fucking hitting Tony. First of all, Tony. Ferguson is made out of metal. It's, it's crazy. Mean, what it's in crazy. the fuck, Especially dude. when you're talking about a, a body type, like you were talking earlier about yeah. uh, someone with a frail body type. He doesn't have a, a chiseled neck. Uh, right, he's not and, built but like Mark he Hunt. Is, it's so unique to me. He's so tough. It's he's a, so fucking it, it tough. Makes me want, is it a choice to go to sleep or not? Like, but there's the there's fuck? also a, right. a key. Like if, if if a fighter could take something on understanding coachability, is like you have to have your reactions, but you also have to have your responses. Like reactive stuff is like like jabs. Positional stuff is reactive. Like you have to be able to react to positions first. I love uh, jujitsu because it's uh, it's position before submission. Mm-hmm. You have to react to to positions before anything else. So there's reactive stuff, but the responses is why you have a co-pilot to help you see what you can't see and start noticing that. Or how are you playing defense and using a jab to find openings where you're still working. But you're thinking and going, oh, every time he does this, he's dropping his hand. And you're able to see things. That's where you have to be responsive and you have to be aware in the moment. Where a lot of times people can't. They just bite down. They just bite down on that mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. Mouth and very similar to the way you used to fight was bite down. Their eyes are getting big. Oh, that's my response is like continue to do this and uh, they're yeah. going to fall. And, again, that is a very important point is a coach and the athlete understanding I am there to help you with your responses. In the gym, I'm going to create your reactions. I'm going to create your patterns, your basic fundamental patterns that's going to help you win positions and slightly win rounds where you're controlling the fight. The other pieces is how am I slowly creating momentum to get finishes. It was pretty stunning how well you you adapted and then also how your endurance leveled off. Like so cuz you you did seem like you were slowing down a little bit at the second round, but it was because you were sprinting because you were throwing these full power fucking haymakers. But then when you leveled off in that third round, then it's like you had an endless gas tank. And that was interesting. You're in control yourself. If yes. you're making decisions, it's a lot easier on your psyche. Yeah. When you're trying to just fight out of things all the time, Again, you're not in control. If you can't control your thought, you cannot control your breathing. How stunned it, were you that Tony could take those shots? In the fight, you know, I, there's there's no there's no point where I where you, I even understand. You weren't thinking at no. all, just throwing them. I, you know, it was crazy. Was, the shots I hit, you know, John or um, Vic, Barboza, and Cerrone with, I was so surprised they went to sleep. Um, you know, I just I didn't understand why. I think it was position mostly, but yeah, I was when I was hitting him with some of those shots, um, especially the one when I came through and he was throwing an uppercut. I couldn't believe he he didn't go to sleep with that. But I go back to the Michael Johnson fight when he hit me with that left hand. There's no reason I shouldn't have went to sleep then. Um, so I I don't I haven't figured that part. Johnson the, has a very good left hand. Out. See when he money. knocked out Poirier with that same punch. one of the sharpest left hands. It was, yeah, it was, and I was turning through it, and it was on the chin. It was everything a knockout shot should be. I don't know why I didn't go to sleep. I, I got to figure that part out. I know how people go to sleep. I don't know how people don't, they, go, to they don't yeah. go to sleep. It's random. It's weird. I mean, yeah. sometimes guys take head kicks, full on head kicks, and they don't go to sleep. It's position. You know, it's position. Yep. Everything is position. Well, say, can you base? Can you, can you lock down? Did you can see I? it? Did you see it? That's mm-hmm. that's can you base? huge piece yeah. because if you don't see it, you ain't bracing for it. So you're letting your. It's again the linear or rotational is what's causing a concussion. And when you don't see a shot, those are the ones that cause the most damage. If you're able to br- brace for it, 
and, and, and bite down on the punch, it's a lot better. So a lot, a lot of times when you're seeing two hooks, both people hooking, I throw like this, I turn away, and then all of a sudden I come and I don't see it. I'm causing that head-on collision, but I'm not braced for it. I'm not leaning right. against the wall where if I see a hook coming, I've got my, my head carrying my weight yeah. and able to take the shot. So a lot of times it's the shots you don't see coming, and that's the, the timing. But there are people who will punch you in any moment, and you're going to go to sleep. Yeah, that's – punching power is so and, weird. And that's, so, that's like one of the craziest things in this, in this world. It's no, not it, if it was, it w- Tony would have went to sleep. I'm telling you, I, I've Vic, seen people Vic who don't hit – and Barboza were on one foot when I touched them. Hey, your low kick? So was, so was Cowboy. Your low kick for many years wasn't thrown with the right technique – but it is it, when you kick people, they're like, "Oh my gosh!" Like you have a sharp, heavy bone. It's so unique. Got dense bones. I got the densest and, bones in the UFC. There you go. So there's really? a spot. Yeah. So they've done a scan on you. Well, they said they can't confirm or deny. I got the densest bones in the UFC. They but can't I'm gonna, confirm. They, they, they can't run it out. But I know, right? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. They can't run it out. We got these stats. They, they have a DEXA, DEXA scan right. at the UFC PI, mm-hmm. and it, you know, you lay there inch by inch, scans your whole body, tells you what you're made of. Um, but yeah, my your bones are denser than Yoel's. I would assume so. That seems crazy. That guy. <laughs>